Oh, let me close that out so it doesn't ding. Here we go. Awesome. So, uh, hey everybody, uh, my name is Sam and I am the Member Experience Manager at Advent Coworking. I wanna thank you for joining us today for our Advent Member Talk. Uh, this weekly program invites different Advent members to talk about the topic of their choosing. Um, and this week we're joined by a new Advent member, um, Sheree DeMeo, and she is going to be talking about synergy versus balance and why work-life balance doesn't work. So <laughs> if you have any questions during the talk, please feel free to either comment if you're on the Facebook Live or add it to the Q&A if you're joining us on Zoom. And Sheree, I will hand it over to you. Thank you so much. I so appreciate it, Sam. Uh, and and hello everybody. I it is it's such a um, a pleasure to talk about this subject because I have been living and breathing the whole idea of the fact that work life balance doesn't work and it never has uh, for I think over 22 years. I'm really dating myself, <laughs> but I want to tell a little story of of when I came to that epiphany. And it was when I was pregnant with my now 21 year old daughter. So it was 22 years ago. And it was, she was actually born in December of 1998. And I was thinking to myself, as so many of us do, I'm looking towards the end of the year and I'm thinking about what I want in my life in the new year. Um, and, and I uh, once again was thinking the whole work life balance aspect. And, and, I also had a couple of goals that appeared to be in direct con conflict with each other, which, which made me frustrated with the whole work-life balance aspect of it. And, and, that, and that was that I was soon to have my third daughter. And uh, so I wanted to spend even more time having a newborn and, and having two daughters already. I wanted to be able to spend more time with them, but I was also an entrepreneur. And I wanted to grow my business uh, and continue to grow my business. And, and of course, in the work-life balance mind, that just totally is in conflict. And it, the mentality is in order to keep that scale even, um, you're gonna have to wait or give up something if you want something else because you can't possibly have both. And, and, and so I just, I sat back and I go, I'm sorry, that's just not fair. I don't see why I can't grow my business and have more time with my children. And, and, and so I sat back and, and, and that's when the epiphany hit me. The, I had two big ahas in that moment. And, and one was that work-life balance doesn't work because first of all, we're looking at everything outside of us. We're actually allowing the outside, everything that's, that's impacting us from the outside in to dictate um, everything from our goals to everything else. And, and, and so that, and again, I was hearing from people on both sides that, well, you can't, you know, you can't grow your business. You're about to have a baby or um, you can't, you know, you can't, you can't spend more time with your children because you own your own business and you have to keep it running. So I was just, I was hearing this left and right. And, and so, so the outside factor really hit me in that moment. And, and so then I said, okay, well, if, if I've decided work-life balance doesn't work, being very goal-oriented, very achievement-oriented, what's the option? What's the option? And, and so I, I sat with for a moment and, and I thought of the whole psychology around me, myself, and I. And that's when I had the epiphany of me, myself, and ink. Ink is an I and C. And I realized that 
there's actually three aspects of us. And, and this is, you know, especially as an entrepreneur, uh, but I'm realizing after 22 years that there's a me, myself and Inc in all of us, but this was inspired by being an entrepreneur working with entrepreneurs. And, and I, I said, there's the me aspect, which is the you that shared with everybody else. It's the me and your coworkers, me and your team members, me and your family, me and your friends. It's, 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 it's me and anybody and everybody that you, you share yourself with in one way or another. And then the myself is the individual you, the unique you, the aspect of you that makes you who you are. You know, everything from your core values to what you love to do and, 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 and what makes you the way you are from a personality standpoint and, and everything about you from the inside out. And then the ink is the professional business, get things done you, business owner you, professional you, everything. And so that's when I had probably the biggest aha around work-life balance is the reason work-life balance doesn't work is, okay, wait a minute. Why are we pitting our life against work? Isn't work a part of our life? And man, when you're an entrepreneur, uh, your, your business is, is like a baby, a baby to you. And, and I often joke and say that my oldest daughter is my business. My business will be 36 years old uh, this year. And I have three natural born daughters uh, that range from 34 to 21 now. And, and so I realized that, hey, the reason work-life balance doesn't work is you can't divide three, the me, myself, and ink aspect by two. You need to start from the inside and who you are and how you're honoring yourself. And so that's when I came up with the idea of synergizing and honoring, synergizing your life. I call it life synergy and honoring the three aspects of you. And so from that point, from that point, from that epiphany moment, I've always been one to practice what I preach and, and use myself as a guinea pig with my entrepreneurial clients. So I was the first one to just try this out. And so I changed the way I did goals. I, I instead of focusing on, okay, here's the list of personal and here's the list of, of, of business goals, I decided, okay, what are my goals around the me aspect of me? What are the goals around the myself aspect of me? And what are the goals around the ink aspect of me? And then the next thing I did was look at it all together, looked at it all together and to see what, how, how I could maybe read between the lines of how I could accomplish, how could I accomplish having more time with my daughters while still growing my business. And, and so what I realized is by looking at the whole and go looking from the inside out, I also started looking at values. And I think your core values are at the core of everything you do um, to be successful and to really love what you're doing and thrive at what you're doing. And, and so I looked at my core values too, and I looked at what I enjoyed doing and what I didn't enjoy doing in uh, specifically in my business. And what I realized is that I could accomplish both of those goals because by again, synergizing and look at, looking at everything as a whole, I decided to hire an office manager to take, take off of my shoulders all the things that were miring my time. And that way I could continue to grow my business while having more time with my daughters. And, and, and so as I experienced this life synergy for myself, and, and saw the amazing empowerment it was by focusing from the inside out, I started applying it with my clients and, and, and really saw some just amazing things happen. Uh, entrepreneurs that had fallen out of love with their business because they weren't, um, and, and family and their families being upset with them because they were, you know, they were working so hard and not spending time with the family um, because the outside perception was this is when you work and this is when you don't work or uh, that type of thing and, and not really understanding that from the inside out they could make their own rules. And it's really fascinating as entrepreneurs, we're all about breaking the rules and making our own rules, but we can still allow society to impose upon us uh, expectations and, and, and that, that mire our ability to be all that we can be. 
And so, uh, you know, one of the ways that I embraced the me, myself, and ink and synergizing <clears throat> is I actually around that same time, probably a little bit before that, it was when my um, when my older daughters were a little younger, I had embraced the um, three promises that their great granny P, my granny P, had taught me. And my first book, Me, Myself, and Ink, is actually dedicated to Granny P because she gave me these three promises that I realized as I had decided work-life balance doesn't work and it never, never has, I also realized that these amazingly wise three promises that my Granny P had taught me could really help me and so many other people. And so I started to also uh, share these with my entrepreneurial clients. And the first promise is to find a way or make a way by helping others find a way or make a way. And so that, think about that for a moment. That touches upon the me aspect of you because you're getting people involved and engaged in helping you uh, find solutions as we, well as you helping them find solutions. Like we're, you know, we can all help each other grow and know what we don't know. Um, and just like me hiring that person to help me in my business, I found a way and made a way to achieve both of my goals that looked like they were in conflict because I found somebody to help me. And of course I helped them because I, they got a job. And, and so, so the second promise is, and this is really hard, um, especially, well, it's hard for so many people. And that is, that is don't feel guilty about making life easier for yourself. And, and, and where that stems from is so often we can feel like we need to be in control of everything and to, the, to our own sabotaging of our ability to focus on the things that we really need to be focusing on. And so that speaks to the myself aspect of, uh, you know, I talk to entrepreneurial clients all the time. Where is your time most valuably spent in your business and in your life? Where can other people step in, find a way or make a way by helping others find a way or make a way to make things easier for you to focus on where you are most valuable and most valued? And, and so part of not feeling guilty about making life easier for yourself is not to feel like you have to wear all the hats, not to feel like you, everything must be on your shoulders. Uh, you know, open yourself up to, and this leads to the third promise. Uh, the third promise you keep to yourself is, I will be open to all possible resources, support, and opportunities because you never, never, never know where that resource or opportunity could come. Uh, I, um, I read several years ago a, a fabulous statement that, that spoke to people who are highly successful and highly sa satisfied with their life, feeling that much gratification in their life, uh, are seven times more likely to share what they're trying to do with others. And so as a result, that opens up the doors of opportunity for resources and connections you may not have known about. And, and so that's honoring the me aspect of you as well as the myself aspect of you because you're letting people in to help you be all that you can potentially be because of all the, the brilliance that you have to offer. So you're not being mired down by some of the other things that, that, could, be, that could be making it difficult for you to move forward in other ways. And then the other aspect of sharing is also caring enough to hear others share uh, and, and being open to different ways of doing things, different ways of approaching things, uh, different ways of accessing and, and gaining access to things. And, and so, you know, make that sharing both ways because, you know, being open, open to all possible resources, support and opportunities also means being open to maybe the way that you currently have things planned. Um, there could be a better way. There could be a more streamlined way. There could be a simpler way. And of course, that makes life easier for yourself as well. Uh, I, I, as I, as I really embrace the whole me, myself and ink with, with my clients and I encourage you to embrace it, 
it's very empowering, but one thing that is important to look at is, okay, how does this, I, I started out talking about two goals of mine that appeared to be in direct conflict and impossible to achieve together. And, 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 and so I want to talk about the whole aspect of outside influences that can skew your thinking in a way that makes you feel like, oh, it's not possible when it really truly could be when you look at being open, sharing, and not feeling guilty about making life easier for yourself. And so I identified as I was working with entrepreneurs over 36 years now that, uh, that because of society and the whole work-life balance, a lot of times goals, there's, a, there's um, a saying I like to say is whose goals are they anyway? And, and, and so often we can get caught up in goal setting and setting goals that aren't really at the heart of who we are or who we want to be or how we want to be or how we want, uh, you know, to proceed in, you know, any of the three aspects of us. But we get caught up in them and we feel, we feel the need to have them as goals because of three different mind traps that people get caught up in. One is what I call the happiness mind trap. You're actually, you have this goal because you believe it'll make you happier or it'll make somebody else happier, but it's not really something that, you know, that is gonna make you happy because what's gonna happen is and there'll be something else that you need to make you happy. And, and I am a big believer in what Eleanor Roosevelt said that happiness is not a goal, it's a, pro, it's a, it's a byproduct. You know, happiness is that inside out and I think by synergizing and honoring the three aspects of you, you're more likely to be happy from the inside out because you are honoring yourself and you're not comparing yourself. And again, looking at the outside or trying to make somebody else happy uh, in, in, instead of looking at how you can be all you can be so that they can be all they can be. Uh, the other trap is what I call the obligation trap. You get caught up in, uh, the um, feeling obligated to do something uh, for uh, for somebody or something, and and sometimes with uh, you know as a business owner, you can over obligate yourself. Uh, it can be through volunteer work or things like that, and then oh my goodness, you've you've over you've over overwhelmed yourself. And, and so again, looking at, okay, what are your real values? What's most important to you? And um, how, how can you relieve some of these, you know, don't feel guilty about making life easier for yourself, relieve yourself of some of these obligations and still of course save face. Well, the way you do it is, you know, you find other people, finding a way or making a way is by helping others find a way or make a way, you know, by, re by having that incredible network of connections, you're probably gonna be able to find somebody that can step in and take over an obligation that's not that's not serving you any further or and they could be even a better person to fulfill that obligation and then there is the aspect of expectation and and being caught in the expectation trap where uh, there is an expectation of you uh, and that can, you know, there's so many things that influence in that from the way, the way you were brought up to uh, an industry expectation and, and well, everybody does it like that in the industry. Well, so what? <laughs> I always like to say, I always like to say if, if um, you know, when you're a little kid and your mother says, well, if Johnny jumps off the cliff, will you too? Well, okay, so, so is the expectation really something that's centered with you or is it something that's centered with somebody else? And then there's a flip side of whose goals are they anyway? And that is as the entrepreneur with employees or, or workers that are working or subcontractors or what have you, um, are you that goal imposer? Are you actually, do you have a goal that somebody else is trying to make you happy? <laughs> and, and how can you make that a, a collaborative goal that both people can embrace for their own reasons? Uh, are, do you, are you imposing goals out of an expectation or, a, 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 or making someone feel obligated? And so especially as somebody leading a company, you have to think about, again, how can you bring it in from 
core value standpoint so that everybody can embrace it on their own terms and you all can 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 reach that pinnacle or that goal together and then look at your life too you know this isn't just about your business this is also about your life and and being at the core of who you are and and honoring yourself is actually going to help you set better goals help you set goals that are truly achievable because they're coming from the center of you and your heart and your soul and what makes you tick and and of course you know some of the most pow powerful entrepreneurial enterprises are built from a strong passion and mission and that mission is truly built from the the core values of who you are so uh i i i hope this is giving you some some you know trains of thought of of how you can shift uh, it has been so gratifying to, to introduce this concept over 20 some years and get people uh, realizing that it's not about balance, it's about synergy. It's about honoring the three aspects of you and allowing uh, the three aspects of you to shine and work together in a way that is enriching and empowering. And you know, the, 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 just the definition of synergy is basically uh, the sum of the parts adds up to a much greater overall impact and a, a much greater, uh, it's basically one plus one equals unlimited and unlimited potential. So I, I, I think what I would like to end with this is that basically know that you have the power within you, the me, myself, and ink aspect of you to, um, to really take anything you want to achieve to its next level through honoring yourself. And, and, and that starts with knowing your core values and, and aligning your goals with the values. And like, take, take a look at some goals that um, you haven't reached yet and, and see if you can't rephrase that goal in a way that's more meaningful for you, because it's amazing. I've seen it time and time again, once it's rephrased from a values mindset, um, which is at the core of who you are, it is, seems so much easier to achieve because it's going to be easier to achieve because you're more impassioned by it. And, and then finally, as you set goals, uh, you know, set goals from based on who you are and who you want to be and how you want to be instead of how everybody else thinks you should be or how you should be. And I hope this has been quite helpful. If there's been any questions, I'd love to answer them. Yeah. Thank you so much. That's <laughs> like, <laughs> I love all of that information. I want you. you to like talk for another hour. Oh, um, I could, <laughs> could tell. I mean, I, I didn't even get into the wishful and fearful thinking aspects. That's a whole nother talk. <laughs> we'll have to do this again another time. Um, we, have, we have a few questions. Wonderful. Uh, yeah. The first one is, well, first I want to say like, I love those three um, like rules from your grandma. Um, <laughs> They're so great. And the, the second one about guilt, mm -hmm. you know, what are ways that, I don't know, I think, I think sometimes for folks like guilt can be really hard to like overcome. It, and, like, it, what are some ways? Yeah, it can. It can. Um, one of the things that I really encourage people to do because it's so easy to feel guilt. And why do we feel guilt? Because of society, because of expectations, because of obligations. Guilt is ridden from the outside in, not from the inside out. It feels an inside out, but it's actually an outside in. We're feeling guilty because of impressions we might be making or uh, you know, people we might feel like we might be letting down when we may not be letting them down at all. We're just imagining that, okay? And, and so what, what I always encourage people to do is from, you know, when you're feeling guilty, okay, look at some values, okay? Look at, okay, guilt comes from maybe feeling like you're not honoring a value or you're making someone, you're gonna make someone unhappy or whatever. And so look at the core value that's important to you related to that feeling of guilt, okay? 
And then I think it's really important. I, I, you know, I actually think you should map out your values and with each value, identify people that share that specific value. Not everyone's gonna share every value you have. So who is it that shares that specific value that is, 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 is centered around what you're feeling guilty about and then go talk to them. Again, you know, find a way or make a way by helping others find a way or make a way. Get that perspective. Um, because you might be surprised at how, first of all, they're going to say, why are you feeling guilty? You shouldn't feel guilty about this. You have every right to feel this way. And they might be able to give you perspective you have that because you're, you're mired in the guilt and you can't get past it. I hope that helps. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then you also mentioned like goal setting. Yes. And um, especially like goal setting from a place of your values. Mm -hmm. Do you have any like resources or you know, suggestions on best ways for folks to kind of structure their goal setting? Well, I think uh, one thing that I look at is um, I, I feel it's, you know, it's really interesting when I first introduced, and I want to share this because when I first introduced me, myself and Inc., I would have my entrepreneurial clients, I, we, would, we would talk about their goals first, and then we would look at their values next. I have turned that around. And, and so now over the last probably 10 to 15 years, I have encouraged people to look at their values first. And then as you're setting goals, and just like you identify, um, you know, what's really important is to understand your reasons for your values. You also wanna understand your reasons for your goals. And the reason you wanna understand the reason for your goals and your values is on the value side, you want to make sure that the value truly is yours. Sometimes we'll see reasons that actually make it clear that the value is not a value, it's a belief that you've been you know, raised to believe or imposed to believe. And so then you look at, okay, so you've got reasons here that aren't even your own. Okay, so what would make this more yours or is it even a value? Do you throw it out the window, so to speak? Same thing with the goals. What are your reasons for your goals? That's when things like the expectations, the happiness and the obligation um, well, everyone in my family was this. So this is why I have to achieve this or, uh, you know, something like that. And so, so looking at your reasons for your goals are really important. And then I also encourage people to look at what their ultimate outcome. Okay, so what is the ultimate outcome having lived your life with your values? You, you look down at the, you know, at the, you know, you're at the very end of your life and you look at your past life. And because you lived these, the, these values, what was the outcome from living this value? And what was the outcome from living that value? And then when you look at your goals, what's the ultimate benefit? Okay, so having achieved this goal, what was the ultimate benefit realized? What is really powerful when you look at all the different ultimate benefits of your goals or you look at the different ultimate outcomes from the different values is you'll find that there's an interconnectivity. You'll find that this goal, this goal, and this goal is gonna help you achieve that ultimate benefit because they're, you know, they're kind of synergized together. And what's really amazing is sometimes it's like, it's like a goal around me and there's a goal around myself and then there's a goal around ink and they all ultimately are going to realize your ultimate benefit. And, and so it's just taking a deeper dive instead of just throwing out, okay, I want to grow my business 25%. Okay, I want to spend this, this many more hours with my family, whatever it might be, uh, you know, get down deeper, you know, instead of, okay, that, you know, I want to... Um, I want to do some really cool, exciting things with my family. And, you know, don't put time on it, put experience around it. Uh, I, I actually, um, you know, on a personal level, there were years and years and years, I, I was trying to lose 10 pounds. <laughs> and, and I could never lose that 10 pounds. And then um, I changed it to, I want to have a strong, vital, um, flexible body. And it made it more about my values, about health and vitality and energy. And all of a sudden, I was able to lose that weight because I didn't focus on what society thought I should weigh. I focused on what was important to me. And, uh, and so that's how, that's how powerful values are. They can, they can totally help you restructure your goals in a way that, that, that resonates more clearly with you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I guess like last thing to, to wrap it up is like if folks want to get in contact with you or like learn more about your work or everything we've talked about today, 
Yeah. How can they reach you? How can they learn more? Okay. Well, absolutely. Um, email me at Sheree at bizgrowthinc.com. You got, you know, we, I'm in the member. I'm, I'm real excited to be a part of this community and uh, would love to, to talk to you. And I can't wait to get to know everybody. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you so much again for presenting today. And thank you to everyone who's joined us and watched. We hope to see you at next week's Advent Member Talk, which is every Tuesday at 430. And I hope you all have a really great evening. Yeah, great evening. Great weekend ahead. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Bye.